Uh, hi, I'm Elita. Um, I don't have much to add. I feel like you've gotten a lot of information in one morning. We can probably all agree. Um, I just have to open up the floor if anybody has any questions. And also, I wanted to say that I've been reading some of your essays. Um, and it's really interesting to see the way that you've been thinking very critically over this uh, subject. Um, and you've also been thinking broadly. So as much as you live right here, um, in this part of the world, I'm really proud of you for thinking outside of this classroom and for, you know, asking the hard questions. So one of the essays that I was reading that I loved, I'm not going to say whose name it was, maybe I'll say it at the end, but they were writing about tourism in Africa. And they said that um, that's an aspect that sometimes we forget. You remember when Mitch started his presentation? He had a quote at the bottom that said, Malawi is rich in many ways. So somebody had written an essay here about how tourism in Africa is actually an aspect that is not always leveraged. So if we think about all these stories about girls or about fishermen or about COVID and the effects or about wars and everything we've spoken about, the question is, what's the solution? Because we can't always talk about what's not working. We have to ask ourselves, how are we going to be a part of the change? That's a lot about my own story, actually, because living in Malawi, I did see the challenges that Velia and Bosco and Mitch have talked about. But every time I see a challenge, I would ask myself, how am I going to be the solution? That's what I asked myself all the time. And I ended up starting an organization for young girls to make sure that girls like these have a mentor have somebody who can remind them that they have a solution and that they have hope and that you know great things can happen. So shout out to the girl, it's a girl, <laughs> who wrote an essay about tourism in Africa and that being a potential for uh, development. But I also want to add that you know tourism involves collaboration. So it involves the UK or any other country collaborating with Malawi. So for example, the partnership that Malawi has with Scotland, that's an example of collaboration and the benefits that can come from it. However, we do have to think critically. Sometimes there are benefits that come from collaboration, but sometimes there are gaps, right? So you might give something to somebody, but then what are you taking out of it? So those are some of the critical um, ways of thinking, even when we think about developing countries in Africa, such as Malawi. Uh, you might be giving aid, you might be raising a lot of uh, money through your projects and through your charities, but ask yourself, what's really coming out of it? Who's really being helped? Is it girls like this, um, or is it leaders who are corrupt? So yeah, that's all I have to say. I'm not going to add much more. Are there any questions? Are there anything that you want to share? Any reflections? Any agreements or disagreements from what we've said so far? Thank you so much. I'll have the opportunity to thank you formally. <laughs> um, I am aware that um, our members came up with some questions, and I would like to just uh, maybe uh, cover one or two. <laughs> Any, are you okay to start with the first one? Yeah. Um, what do you think about the struggle the most in Malawi, and what can be done to help by the government? Hmm. That's a good question. So she's asking, what do you think girls struggle with most in Malawi, and what can be done to, by the government to help them? Right. Um, I guess we might all have different answers, but I would say one of the biggest struggles is completing um, primary school and secondary education. Um, there are different reasons. I mean, it's not like a straightforward question. It's a good question, because someone might think they don't finish school because they don't have money. And if we give them money, then that will solve everything, right? Well, that's what I would assume. But the reality is, it's not just about money. So girls do need funding, for example, for their school fees, for school uniforms, for school supplies to go and complete school. But they also need um, an environment that facilitates their ability to thrive. <coughs> so there are different kinds of environments that facilitate um, the opportunity to thrive. So if you think about yourselves, um, when you go home, you feel safe, you feel supported by your parents, um, you have clean water, you have electricity. Those are the kind of things that are actually facilitating a good life. They're enabling you to thrive. 
So if the government could ensure that girls in Malawi have a safe place to return home, have water, have electricity, then I'm pretty sure that they would do well and actually complete their primary till secondary school. Is there anything you would add? Yes, I want to add. This is a continuation to what Edith has said. When everything what Edith has said is provided, the society also needs to support the girl child. Because if it, the attitude from both the society and the girl child they are not right, even if you have money, even if you have all the resources, yeah. you will still not continue with the, your education. Apart from improving the attitude itself, legislations, laws should be there to support the girl child holistically. When we are dealing with the support in terms of holistic thinking here, it shouldn't be one side. It shouldn't be only one family, but everyone should support you. Thank you. We also have a question about the wider area. So, okay, very okay to. Um, what do you think the main cause for underdevelopment is in African countries, like such as Norway? Mm. Good question. Maybe Bosco, you can take that one. Okay, I'll attempt to take it. That's a very <laughs> deep question. I mean, if you speak of underdevelopment, there's different dimensions to it, right? Um, but I think one area is what area they hinged on about how you know interventions are designed and who is actually benefiting from it. I think there's quite a huge, huge element of lack of accountability um, in African context. Support comes, I think if you're looking at the statistics, there's a lot of billions that have come in to support certain issues and deal with different problems. But our accountability systems are very weak. Things, people get away with anything, you know? Money will come in, support will come in, but for it to get to the person that who actually needs it and to solve the actual problem um, is an issue. That's number one. Number two, um, I think it's the way support is designed. We, we lack um, participation in, in the designing of different interventions, the problems that we have in Africa. Most of the solutions, whether it's within country or even when you're looking at international level, uh, the people that need to participate and contribute to the solution itself are not really part of it. So I think those two uh, critical issues are, are putting us where we still are today despite the many efforts. That's what I would say. Mm -hmm. I think just to add on that, so he said the people who are supposed to participate are not participating in the design. The question is, who are those people? Yeah. It's these girls. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, my, me as a girl, even though I'm not a girl anymore, but <laughs> me as a girl knows what I need to thrive. But then if you don't include me as part of the conversation, then there's not going to be much change. There's actually a very interesting story. Um, I don't know if we still have that slide where Mitch had shown, you know, the borehole. You saw that where they were trying to get a drink of water. I don't know if you remember that picture. So there's an interesting story where um, people had come with a lot of money from another country and they wanted to support Malawi. And they knew that people in Malawi don't always have clean water. So they knew that if we put a borehole, a pump for water, it's going to change the women's life. It's going to change the girl's life. They're not going to have to walk a long distance to get water. It's going to be amazing. So they built this um, you know, very fancy borehole. And they thought, oh, this is fantastic. They have water now. And yet, for the next couple of months, nobody used it. Literally, nobody used it. Nobody even had a drink of water from there. And they came back after a couple of months and said, have we changed your lives? Is everything fantastic now? And everybody said, we don't use that well. And they asked, well, why? We thought that's the problem here. You don't have clean water. And the lady said, actually, we really like uh, taking walks as a community because that's the time where we get to bond and we get to talk with our families. So we actually like walking a little bit longer to the, to the river. That's where we like to get our water. So if you wanted to build us a borehole, you should have built it closer.